This is a recording for my civil procedure class. It is part of our integration so that you can prepare for the final examination. We start with Rule 18 as agreed upon. In Rule 18, this is important. Uh, this is what we know as pre-trial. This is a proceeding that is conducted before the trial. Kaya natin sinabing pre-trial. And um, there are many um, matters that will happen, many things that will happen during pre-trial which will more or less dictate the outcome of the case. Oh, so, tingnan natin, ano? Rule 18, Section 1, when is this conducted? The amended rules for 2019 are very clear. It is conducted after the last responsive pleading has been served and filed. And uh, who is the one who will move so that there will be a pre-trial? Section 1 continues, the branch clerk of court shall issue a notice of pre-trial. When will the branch clerk of court issue it? Within five calendar days from the filing of the last responsive pleading. Okay, so, big sabihin kung ang last responsive pleading is the answer of the defendant, it is incumbent upon the branch clerk of court to issue a notice of pretrial, and that is within five calendar days from filing. And when will the pretrial be held? It shall be held not later than 60 calendar days from the filing of the last responsive pleading. This amendment clarifies a confusion in the old system because in the old system, although it says that the branch clerk of court shall be the one to call for pre-trial, jurisprudence also says that it is the duty of the plaintiff to move for the conduct of pre-trial. Pero ngayon, wala ng confusion dyan. At saka before, uh, hindi talaga sigurado kung ano yung exact date for issuance of the notice of pre-trial or exacto kung kailan i-hold yung pre-trial. So, there has to be a motion to set and that could take a long time uh, from the time of the last responsive pleading was filed. Kaya lang ngayon, malinaw na malinaw na. Wait for five calendar days from the filing of the last responsive pleading and then the branch clerk of court has the duty kasi nakalagay dito shall, okay? Has the duty to issue a notice of pre-trial and it must not be more than 60 calendar days from filing so dapat within two months from the time that the last responsive pleading is filed there is already a pre-trial that has been scheduled what is the nature and purpose of pre-trial ang pre-trial let's go first to the nature the nature is it should be it is mandatory Actually, sa 1964 rules of court, mandatory naman talaga yung pre-trial. Kaya lang, for a long time, hindi nasusunod. Uh, parties were not really that serious and the judge, judges were not really that serious in conducting pre-trial before. So, when I was new in law practice, hindi masyadong na, nagagamit itong proceedings on, on pre-trial. Kaya lang, doon nag-umpisa yung Supreme Court maging strict. So, there were circulars saying that pretrial is mandatory and uh, the pretrial uh, must be attended by the party and his counsel. Pretrial brief must be filed at least three days before the actual pretrial is held. Dahan-dahan nagkaroon ng mga rules na ganon, which became part of practice because the judges uh, became more uh, strict in implementing pretrial. So ngayon, talagang mandatory na siya. Ano ngayon ang purpose ng pretrial? Para ma-appreciate ninyo yung pretrial, ito talaga yung intention niyan. It is to lay your cards on the table. For the parties to disclose their case, their legal position, the evidence that they have, walang element of surprise. Before the, the courts became strict on the implementation of pretrial, there was always the, or most often, the element of surprise during trial kasi hindi pa alam ng parties ano ba yung talagang evidence na ipapresent, sino ba yung witnesses na mag appear So, there were times when the parties will be surprised na ito pala yung witness na ipapresent. Pero ngayon, hindi na pwede yon. It's to remove the element of surprise. It is so that parties will be able to prepare for the trial of the case. So, tingnan natin, ano, ang purposes ng pre-trial okay, are uh, outlined in the rules. So, letter A, 
possibility of amicable settlement or of a submission to alternative modes of dispute resolution. Always, 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 the parties, even if there is already a case in court, they will try to go for amicable settlement. Of course, this is a civil case. There is always that avenue for amicable settlement. And later on, we will see how is this carried out in the pretrial procedure. And then the other uh, purpose in letter A is the possibility of submission to alternative modes of dispute resolution. So, kunyari, pwede bang isubmit ito sa conciliation, sa mediation, sa arbitration, so that the parties can arrive at a resolution without having to go through trial. Ito, binibigyan ng court, yung parties, na maresolve yung kanilang issues between themselves, either with the help of a mediator, conciliator, or wala. They will just talk to each other. Uh, with their counsel or maybe without counsel. Basta binibigyan sila ng opportunity. Kasi that's the easiest way to resolve a case. Ang philosophy ko nga, no, for a long time, uh, the best way to win a case is to prevent it. And you can really prevent a trial by taking advantage of amicable settlement or ADR procedures during pre-trial. Letter B, simplification of the issues. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Eh, yung parties may look at the case from a certain point of view where many issues will have to be proven, but the judge will be able to help them simplify the issues para ma-define, eto lang naman talaga ang pinag-aawayan ninyo. Okay? And that will significantly shorten the proceedings. And then letter C, the possibility of obtaining stipulations or admissions of facts and documents to avoid unnecessary proof. Okay. Minsan kasi hindi naman kailangan talagang mag-present ng evidence para lang ma-prove yung isang fact. But, you know, if the other party will agree because there will be no dispute. For example, it is a legal separation case. Because it's a legal separation case, the premise there is that the petitioner is married to the respondent. So, dapat, hindi na yun kinokontest. So, isa sa mga ipuprove or i-offer rather for stipulation is the fact that the parties are married. And if the parties will stipulate on that, that will shorten the proceedings. Or for example, they have children. They will stipulate that they have children. And then, they will stipulate also that this is the marriage certificate and these are the birth certificates of the children and these are genuine and genuine documents, they are authentic and validly executed. So if that can be agreed upon during pre-trial, then there is no more need to present evidence on that. And as you can see, that will definitely shorten the proceedings. And then letter D, limitation of the number and identification of witnesses and the setting of trial dates. So minsan kasi masyadong madaming witnesses, e paulit-ulit rin naman yung sasabihin nila. So, this is one instance when the judge can limit the number of witnesses. He will ask the parties, what's the name of your witness and what will be the subject of the witness's testimony? Kapag may duplication, pwedeng hindi na lang ipresent yung iba kasi merely corroborative lang naman. Okay? So, that's what it means. And then, setting of trial dates, the parties and the lawyers will already agree beforehand on all the trial dates that they will need for the case. So, for example, there will be 10 witnesses in all. They can all agree on 10 trial dates. Letter E, the advisability of a preliminary reference of issues to a commissioner. Commissioners are specialized persons or specialized in certain aspects of business or they are, are engaged in a certain kind of profession. And if the issue involves a technical matter, for example, the appraisal of a certain piece of real property, para hindi na masyadong magtagal dun sa trial at magpapresent pa ng evidence ng appraiser, appraiser pwedeng i-refer yung issue sa commissioner on how much a certain piece of property is. So, uh, if the uh, parties will agree on a commissioner, then the findings of the commissioner will be submitted to the court. And that will again shorten the proceedings. And then letter F, the propriety of rendering judgment on the pleadings or summary judgment 
or of dismissing the action should a valid ground therefore be found to exist. So, doon muna tayo sa rendering judgment on the pleadings. Alam natin that there are certain grounds for filing a motion for judgment on the pleadings. Pero kahit walang motion, let us say, nakita ng court after stipulations that the answer does not really tender an issue. Wala naman talagang pinag-aawayan on a factual matter. So, pwede nang i-resolve yung case on a legal question. Again, pag sinabi nating factual matter, you need evidence. Pag sinabi ng legal matter, you don't talk about evidence. You talk about the applicable law. So, it's possible that the parties agree on certain facts and the only issue left to be tried is a legal question. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng judgment on the pleadings kasi wala ng factual matter na pinag-aawayan. Okay? And even that, that there is no more need for a motion by the plaintiff to render judgment on the pleadings. Pwedeng pag-usapan na to and even the judge can be the one to, to make a determination of that. Okay? And the, the next part is the propriety of rendering a summary judgment. Ang summary judgment, ang ground nito is there appears to be an issue but it is not a genuine issue. And that could be determined during pretrial. Now, wala man talaga pinag-aawayan that there is really an admission of uh, certain facts. And so, the court can now render a judgment. So, that's one thing that can happen after a pretrial. And then, the last part of letter F is the propriety of dismissing the action should a valid ground therefore be found to exist. So, for example, during pretrial, the parties determine that the claim of the plaintiff has prescribed. So, there is a valid ground for dismissing the action. Parties can agree. Instead of wasting time on a trial, and at the end of the trial, it dismiss rin pala because the action has prescribed. Pwede nang gawin yan, determine yan at the beginning of the case. Okay, now letter G. Ito, maraming amendments ito. Maraming mga bagong inintroduce itong letter G. Okay? So, during pre-trial, the court can discuss the requirement for the parties to, number one, mark their respective evidence if not yet marked in the judicial affidavits of their witnesses. Okay, so they bring their documents. Let's say, kung konti lang yung documents, madali lang yun, no? Pwede yun gawin you know, as part of the judicial affidavit. Pero minsan kasi napaka-voluminous ng documents. So, what if you have like 100 documents? Mahirap, mahirap yun gawin as part of the trial. And what can be done is, during the pre-trial, this can be marked. Or, the judge can say, alright, let us set a meeting for you to mark your documents. So, kung lalo na kung madami, the judge will order the parties to appear before the branch clerk of court on a certain date and time, bring the original, bring the photocopy, and that's where they will compare the evidence and mark the photocopy. Okay. And then number two, examine and make comparisons of the adverse party's evidence vis-a-vis -vis the copies to be marked. It's the same thing. Okay, so titignan, uh, this is a photocopy and this is a faithful reproduction of the original that can be uh, manifested during pre-trial, kaya ang imamark na ngayon yung photocopy. Kasi na-compare na with the original. And then lalagyan ng branch clerk of court, uh, this is uh, an FRO, faithful reproduction of the original. So makikita mo may, may signature yung branch clerk after the letters FRO, faithful reproduction of the original, exhibit A, for example. And then let's go to number three. They can manifest for the record stipulations regarding the faithfulness of the reproductions and the genuineness and due execution of the other party's evidence. And again, if they stipulate, there is no more need to present. Katulad no sinabi ko kanina, let's say it's a case involving marriage, uh, the marriage certificate has to be presented, eh hindi naman kinokontest ng no other party that they are both married, so they can stipulate, yes, this is genuine, and for reference purposes, we agree that exhibit uh, B, uh, B uh, which is uh, the marriage certificate, be so marked, and the defendant or respondent can also agree that they will mark it as exhibit 2. So, pwedeng ganon. And then, number 4, reserve evidence not available at pretrial but only in the following manner. Okay, so, lahat ng ebidensya as a general rule dapat ipresenta sa pretrial. Hindi pwedeng 
mag-reserve. Ay, hindi pwedeng sabihin ng parties, Your Honor, I reserve the right to present evidence during the trial. Dati pwede yon. Pero ngayon, stricto na. So, there are only two situations kung kailan pwedeng mag-reserve. Okay, you see, for one, for testimonial evidence, by giving the name or position and nature of the testimony of the proposed witness. So, hindi pwedeng just anybody na hindi alam, you cannot reserve, uh, a blank, make a blanket reservation rather. You have to know the name of the person or the position and the nature of the testimony. So, for example, Your Honor, I'll be presenting the local civil registrar of uh, Kaintarisal. Yan. And the purpose is to identify the uh, death certificate of this person. So, pwedeng, you will have to specify in that manner. And then, the second uh, instance is for documentary evidence and other object evidence by giving a particular description of the evidence. Exact dapat. Hindi pwedeng blanket reservation of saying, I reserve the right to present a documentary evidence during the trial. Dati pwede yun. Pero starting with the 2019 amendments, hindi na pwede. And so, there is this warning. No reservation shall be allowed if not made in the manner described above. And the reason for that is this will cause a delay in the proceedings if the parties are not specific about the nature of the evidence. At saka, in, ay na-avoid din yung element of surprise. Okay, so let's look at letter H. Okay, in the pretrial, such other matters as may aid in the prompt disposition of the action will also be taken up. Okay, uh, next, the failure without just cause of a party and counsel to appear during pretrial despite notice shall result in a waiver of any objections to the faithfulness of the reproductions marked or the genuineness and due execution. So note, during pretrial, both party and counsel must appear in person. Hindi pwedeng yung counsel lang. Okay? And then there is a, a situation when counsel can appear, but we will take that up later because there is a requirement. Okay. And then here it says, the failure without just cause of a party and or counsel to bring the evidence required shall be deemed a waiver of the presentation of such evidence. So we, you must be ready with all the requirements during pre-trial. And then next, the branch clerk of court shall prepare the minutes of the pre-trial, which shall have the following format, and there is a format prescribed. All right? Now, section 3, notice of pre-trial. So ito yung before the pre-trial is held. Ito yung notice na tinutukoy dito sa section 1. The notice that will be issued by the branch clerk of court. Ano yung nakalagay dito? It shall include the dates. Three dates are the date of pre-trial, the date of court annex mediation, and the date of judicial dispute resolution if necessary. Okay? So, tatlong dates ang nakalagay. Nung araw, ang nilalagay lang yung date ng pre-trial. And then later on, nagkaroon ng amendment na kailangan ilagay na rin yung date ng Judicial Dispute Resolution, or ang tawag natin dyan sa practice, JDR. Yung court annex mediation, hindi yan nilalagyan ng date dati. Because what happens is, during pre-trial, the, so we go through the proceedings, yung stipulation of facts, um, identification of documents, enumeration of witnesses, and so on. And then after that pre-trial proceeding, the court will send the parties to the court annex mediation center. And there, they will have to agree on the dates for mediation. Pero ang, isis, ang nakaset na yung judicial dispute resolution, just in case there is a failure of court annex mediation. Yung court annex mediation, this is conducted by mediators in the mediation Philippine Mediation Center, KPM, PMC. And the mediators are not judges. The mediators are not attorneys as a rule. So sometimes they have other professions, like some of them are doctors, uh, some of them are teachers, and, and they are trained in order to mediate so that the parties will arrive at an amicable settlement. Okay? Uh, pero kung walang nangyaring amicable settlement at that level, ibabalik yung case sa judge for judicial dispute resolution. And the purpose again here is to still try to have them arrive at an amicable settlement. So this time, because you call it JDR, it is the judge who will be the mediator to try to make the parties arrive at a resolution, at an amicable settlement. So here, yung notice of pre-trial will be served on counsel. 
or on the party if he has no counsel. The counsel served with notice is charged with the duty of notifying the party. So, isa na lang notice ang ipapadala. Pero, as I said, both of them must be present. Counsel and the party. So, ito. Non-appearance at any of the foregoing settings shall be deemed as non-appearance at pre-trial and shall merit the same sanctions under Section 5. So, tignan natin yan a little bit later. Okay? So, ito again, non-appearance of either. So, Section 4, appearance of the parties. It shall be the duty of the parties and their counsel to appear at the pre-trial, the court and mediation, and the JDR, if necessary. And non-appearance of a party and counsel may be excused only for acts of God, force majeure, or duly substantiated physical inability. Yung hindi na nila talaga kayang pumunta sa court kasi sobra. So, even if they are sick, mere sickness is not a ground. Dapat that kind of sickness must result in physical inability to go to court. Okay, so here, a representative may appear on behalf of a party if he cannot appear, if he is physically unable, but he must be fully authorized in writing to enter into an amicable settlement, to submit to alternative modes of dispute resolution, and to enter into stipulations or admissions of facts and documents. So, yung representative, kung hindi yung kasama sa kanyang authority, eh, invalid yung authority na yun. It's important kasi kung hindi kasama, that will still result in a delay in the proceedings which the rules are seeking to avoid. Now, what kind of authorization must this be? This is what we call an SPA or a special power of attorney. It must be a notarized document that is brought by the representative party. Now, let's go to Section 5. So, Section 4 is appearance of party. Section 5 is effect of failure to appear. So, when duly notified, meaning natanggap nung, nung counsel yung notice of pretrial, the failure of the plaintiff and counsel to appear without valid cause when so required, pursuant to the next preceding section, shall cause the dismissal of the action. The dismissal shall be with prejudice unless otherwise ordered by the court. Again, the dismissal shall be with prejudice. Ibig sabihin, hindi na pwedeng i-refile. Okay? And because it is with prejudice, it is similar to a decision on the merits. Okay? So, with prejudice unless otherwise ordered by the court. A similar failure on the part of the defendant and counsel shall be caused to allow the plaintiff to present his or her evidence ex parte within 10 calendar days from termination of pre-trial and the court to render judgment on the basis of the evidence offered. Okay, so kapag ang defendant ang hindi dumating, parang na-default siya. Plaintiff will still be required to present evidence ex parte, meaning without the participation of the defendant. Okay, and then ang importante dyan, yung 10 calendar days from termination of pre-trial. Okay, section 6, pre-trial brief. Now, the pre-trial brief is filed before the pre-trial. Okay, important ito, no? So, it says here, the party shall file with the court and serve on the adverse party in such manner as shall ensure their receipt at least three days, three calendar days before the date of the pre-trial, their respective pre-trial briefs. Okay, so make sure that at least three days before the pre-trial, natanggap na nung kabilang party. Dati, walang nakalagay ng talagang ganyan. So, ang ginagawa nung plaintiff, for example, na iba, no? Eh, sinaserve nila by registered mail. Siyempre, during pre-trial, hindi pa yun matanagap nung other party. So, hindi siya prepared. Okay? And then, mare-reset yung pre-trial. Or, makibigyan uh, ng judge ng time yung other party to read the pre-trial brief pag finish siya ng plaintiff yung defendant. Okay, so, it will still result in the delay of the case. Ngayon, very clear na. At least three days before, dapat matanggap. Okay? Hindi lang ma-file, hindi lang uh, mas ma-serve, pero dapat it was received at least three calendar day, days before pre-trial. And what must be included in the pre-trial brief? Uh, excuse me. What must be included in the pre-trial brief? So, these are very 
uh, important contents of the pre-trial brief. Letter A, a concise statement of the case and release prayed for. A statement of the case. Okay? Uh, ibig sabihin, uh, concise statement, how, how the facts are that lead to the filing of the case. Letter B, a summary of admitted facts and proposed stipulation of facts. Importante rin to, no? Where do you get the admitted facts? You get it from the pleadings. Kasi doon, di ba, merong complaint, merong answer. Sa answer, nakalagay if there is an allegation that is admitted by the defendant in what paragraph of the complaint. So, doon mo makukuha yung summary of admitted facts. And then, yung proposed stipulation of facts naman, ito yung mga hindi inadmit, pero you want to offer it because during pre-trial, the parties might want to discuss whether they can agree on these facts. Okay? And then letter C, the main factual and legal issues to be tried or resolved. So here in the pre-trial brief, you have to enumerate the questions of facts that you want the court to deal with. And then you have to enumerate the questions of law. So ano ba yung example ng factual question? Example in a reckless imprudence Ano, no, si criminal case yun. In a, in a quasi-delic case uh, involving a collision of vehicles, factual issue that you want to present is whether or not the defendant's vehicle was the first that collided with the plaintiff's vehicle. That's a factual issue. Now, the legal issue is with respect to liability under the law. And uh, how will you phrase that? It is something like, whether or not the defendant is liable to the plaintiff. So, yan, yung legal issue. So, those are the uh, samples of factual and legal issues to be tried or resolved. And then, letter D, propriety of referral of factual issues to commissioners. Uh, letter E, the documents or other evidence to be marked stating the purpose thereof. Okay, you can submit these documents with a pre-trial brief or they might already be, have been submitted together with a judicial affidavit which was submitted together with a complaint. Okay, and then letter F, the names of witnesses and summary of the respective testimonies. Hindi lang basta names. Dapat nandun na yung summary. So this is a very, uh, very specific requirement. Okay. And then letter G, a brief statements of points of law and citation of authorities. Ito yung wala dati sa requirement ng pre-trial brief. Ngayon, meron na. So you have to cite the law and you have to cite authorities like jurisprudence. Okay? And from here, you can see, no, if you look at the pre-trial briefs of the parties, in the beginning pa lang, you can already see whether you have a strong legal position or not from the point of view of evidence and low. And there is a statement here, failure to file the pre-trial brief shall have the same effect as failure to appear at pre-trial. Okay. What's that? Ah, yung plaintiff, pag hindi nag-file, the, the plaintiff will be, the case will be dismissed with prejudice. Yung defendant, pag hindi nag-file, plaintiff will be allowed to present evidence ex parte. Alright? Now, let's go to section 7. So, again, tignan natin yung flow. There is a notice of pre-trial. There is a, an actual pre-trial proceeding that is held. Okay? And then, after that, the judge will issue a pre-trial order. So, ito na yan sa Section 7. Upon termination of the pre-trial, the court shall issue an order within 10 calendar days, which shall recite in detail the matters taken up during pre-trial, and it shall include the following. So, ito yung pinaka-summary of what happened what actually happened. Letter A, an enumeration of admitted facts. Okay, so makikita mo na ito yung mga hindi na kailangan pag-usapan sa case kasi na-admit na ng parties. So, letter B, minutes of pre-trial conference. C, legal and factual issues to be tried. D, applicable law, rules, and jurisprudence. E, the evidence marked. F, specific trial dates for continuous trial which shall be within the period provided by the rules. G, ito bagong-bagong requirement. The case flow chart to be determined by the court which shall contain the different stages of the proceedings up to the promulgation of the decision and the use of time frames for each stage in setting the trial dates. Okay? And then H, a statement that the one-day examination of witness rule and most important witness rules shall be strictly followed. Ano yung rules na to? 
one day examination of witness rule. A witness will be required to go to court only once. Let's say that there are 10 trial dates. Hindi pwedeng the witness will go there twice unless, of course, the circumstances are such that, you know, may, may excusion. But as a general rule, isang beses lang. Now, the witness will be presented on direct examination. And mabilis lang yon kasi may judicial affidavit siya. So, on direct examination, what the witness will do is to identify his judicial affidavit for purposes of proving the genuineness and due execution of the document. That will take only about 5 minutes. And then the witness has to be cross-examined on that same date. Hindi na siya papabalikin sa another date. So, yan yung one-day examination of witness rule. Okay? Yung most important witness rule naman, if there are several witnesses who will uh, testify on a similar matter, yung pinaka-importante sa kanila, because they will similar on the they will testify on a similar matter, yung pinaka-importante, yun ang ipapresent. Kung meron naman witness na hindi naman talaga importante yung magiging subject ng kanyang testimony, that can be dispensed with already. Okay? And then letter I, a statement that the court shall render judgment on the pleadings or summary judgment as the case may be if it is found during pretrial that uh, the answer does not tender an issue, which is a ground for some for judgment on the pleadings, or that there is a genuine there is no genuine issue, which is a ground for a summary judgment. Okay, and then we go to the next paragraph. The direct testimony of witnesses for the plaintiff shall be in the form of judicial affidavits. After the identification of such affidavits, cross examination shall proceed immediately. This is just a reiteration of the one day examination of witness rule. Postponement of presentation of the party's witnesses at a scheduled date is prohibited. So, very clear. Hindi na pwedeng ma-postpone except if it is based on acts of God, force majeure, or duly substantiated physical inability of the witness to appear and testify. The party who caused the postponement is warned that presentation of its evidence must still be terminated within the remaining dates previously agreed upon. So, if the plaintiff was granted five trial dates, but he had to postpone uh, the presentation of a witness because that witness is not available on the given date, he still have has to present all the witnesses within the five calendar days that it has been agreed upon during pre-trial. Now, should the opposing party fail to appear without valid cause, stated in the next preceding paragraph, the presentation of the scheduled witness will proceed with the absent party being deemed to have waived the right to interpose objection and conduct cross-examination. So, sorry na lang. Absent siya, no valid cause, anong sanction, no more right to cross-examination, no more right to object to the cross-examination. I mean, no more right to object to the direct examination. Okay? Now, the contents of the pretrial order shall control the subsequent proceedings unless modified before trial to prevent manifest injustice. Hindi pwedeng ibahin. That's, of course, as a general rule. So, like I said, the procedure is there's a pretrial and then there's a court annex mediation and then JDR, judicial dispute resolution. So, in this stage, tapos na yung pretrial, may pretrial order na. Dito na tayo sa section 8, CAM. Court Annex Mediation. After pre-trial and after the issues are joined, the court shall refer the parties for mandatory Court Annex Mediation. And the period shall not exceed 30 calendar days without further extension. So, hindi na pwede. Dati, pwede ma-extend, ma-extend because the parties might be able to arrive at a settlement. But now, the parties only have one month to arrive at an amicable settlement under the CAM. Otherwise, it will be returned back to court. So, let's say there was an amicable settlement. What will happen? The mediator will issue a notice that there has been a, an amicable settlement. The parties will execute a, a proper document such as a compromise agreement. And this will be submitted to the judge for approval. And the judge will render a judgment upon compromise. Pero kung walang nangyaring amicable settlement, it will be sent back to court for the JDR. And that's what is mentioned in Section 9. So, Section 9, saan gagawin yung JDR? Ito nakalagay, 
only if the judge of the court to which the case was originally raffled is convinced that settlement is still possible, the case may be referred to another court for judicial dispute resolution. So, ibabalik yung case dun sa court where it came from, kaya lang, the JDR will not be conducted by that judge. It will be conducted by another court for JDR. Okay? Before, hindi ganon. Before, the judge of that court of origin will ask the parties do you want me to conduct the JDR? The parties will say yes or no. If, if yes, it will be put on record and then kung walang nangyaring resolution <clears throat> the same judge will conduct the trial. Pero pag sinabi ng parties no, kasi baka magkaroon na ng knowledge yung judge tungkol sa case. During the discussions on the judicial dispute resolution the parties will say your Honor, we want another judge to conduct the JDR. That's the only time it will be referred to another court. Pero ngayon, iba na. Okay? Una, the judge has to be convinced na pwede pang masettle yung kaso. Kasi kung malinaw na wala ng settlement, bakit pa niya i-JDR? That will result in delay. So, if he is convinced, okay, eh, he will refer the case immediately to a different judge. Kapag nagkaroon ng amicable settlement doon, there will be a compromise agreement and that will be approved by this court. Pero kung walang nagkaroon ng compromise agreement, ibabalik siya sa court of origin. Okay? And then, uh, trial will proceed. So here you see, the judicial dispute resolution shall be conducted within a non-extendable period of 15 calendar days from notice of failure of the CAM. If the JDR fails, trial before the original court shall proceed on the dates agreed upon. All proceedings is important during the uh, court annex mediation and the JDR shall be confidential. Kasi maaring nagkaroon ng mga disclosures yung parties during the amicable settlement. Nag-usap sila tungkol sa kanila mga personal issues. This will be confidential. And it will not be considered by the court in uh, deciding the case. Assuming that there is no amicable settlement. And then, section 10, judgment after pre-trial. Should there be no more controverted facts or no more genuine issue as to any material fact or an absence of any issue, or should the answer fail to tender an issue, the court shall, without prejudice to a party, moving for judgment on the pleadings under Rule 34 or summary judgment under Rule 35, no moto proprio include in the pre-trial order that the case be submitted for summary judgment or judgment on the pleadings without need of position papers or memoranda. In such cases, judgment shall be rendered within 90 calendar days from termination of pre-trial. The order of the court to submit the case for judgment pursuant to this rule shall not be subject to appeal or certiorari. Kasi it's possible that during pre-trial, the parties have entered into stipulations of facts to the point na wala na talagang issue. And then the judge does not have to wait for the parties to file a motion. The judge can already include in the order, all right, I will, I will issue a judgment after pre-trial because there is no more genuine issue. Okay? So wala na siyang hihingin a document from the parties. He will have to resolve it within 90 calendar days, uh, three months from pre-trial. So ito yung mabilis na mabilis na resolution ng case. And this order to submit the case for judgment will not be subject to appeal or certiorari. Kasi madedelay na naman. What can be subject here is the decision itself. Okay. So we end here with uh, Rule 18 and I will prepare another video for Rule 19.